quick note today about starting and ending when you're doing your quilting. So at the moment I have my walking foot on the machine, but it, this is the same method whether you're using a walking foot or a hopping foot. I'll show you with both. You can see I've got my top thread is a pink and my bobbin thread is an aqua. So I'm going to show you what you need to do when you start quilting. So obviously my the only thread showing at the moment is my top thread. I want to bring up my bobbin thread. So I'm just going to hand turn the wheel and it's my foot up. Yes, it's up. And I'm going to pull through. So literally I held on to the top thread and I pulled through the loop for the bobbin. And then I'm going to tuck that underneath the machine and reposition it so that my starting point is back where I've pulled through the thread. And because I've got my stitch length on very small, uh, I'm going to do a couple of locking stitches. So those stitches are so tiny, no one's going to get them undone without a bit of a fight. So that's securing the stitches can put my stitch length back to I'm going to put it on two and a half on mine uh, because if I'm using my walking foot I'm doing straight stitching so you can then stitch uh, you can put your needle down if you need to change directions etc etc now if I want to then come back and finish uh, let's go this way actually. Say so I'm filling a block with this particular design and you might notice that I can use either the lines on this fabric or um, actually the side of the foot. So this this row of stitching here is running down the side this side of the the foot. So you can give yourself some spacing when it comes to stitching. Uh, all right so I filled my block and now I want to I'm going to end off. So let's do one more pretend it's in a square. Put my stitch length back down to zero and do a number of locking stitches there as well. My needle needs to come up now don't forget to adjust your stitch length if you're going back to uh, other quilting. So I've lifted the foot, pull it out, go back to where it was and you want to do the same concept. Rotate for one thread, for one stitch. You can see it's starting to pull up the bobbin's thread already and where did it go? It disappeared I should be able to pull it out again there we go and you can simply snip that off level with the quilt the same with your starting threads because you've anchored them you've secured them you can snip them off with uh, level with the top of your quilt and on the back that was our beginning and this is our end so it actually looks really neat from the back as well. So I'll switch over to my hopping foot and I'll show you the same. So I've still got the same thread combination, the aqua in the bobbin and the pink in the top. It means you can see the difference in threads when I pull it through. So by holding onto the top thread, position your where you want to start quilting, your foot where you want to start quilting. Yeah, you can actually put the quilt, the, the foot down a little bit with uh, with the hopping foot because you can easily move your quilt sandwich uh, underneath the foot. Uh, you will find it slightly easier because you're disengaging the tension if you lift it. So I did that rather quickly. Let me pull that out and uh, start that again. So position your foot where you want to do it. I've got this thread wrapped around my finger. Take one stitch uh, and then 
pull up oh, there we go pull up the bobbin thread so you've got a loose tail tuck it underneath the foot so that it's out of the way reposition your foot to your starting point and put the foot down and then now when I adjust when I put the hopping foot on I did drop my feed dogs and I have reduced my stitch length um, to less than one so a couple of locking stitches now the machine will barely move so be good if you go over at least a, one or two threads each time and uh, that's the start and then you've got So um, what I was going to say, you've, you're now ready to start quilting. So I've done uh, a bit of a, a wavy line and uh, what I've done is actually quilted up to it, get my finger out of the way, quilted up to it and then gone backwards a little bit. Now by tugging on that, I'm not sure if you can start to see, there's a slight bit of aqua thread just here. We don't want that last stitch to be loose, so I'm actually going to stitch that down and then pull it away now again hold on to a big loop of your top thread manually turn the wheel lift the foot and then you can see the bobbin thread came up pretty much straight away so you can snip through all three of those And then go back and snip off the starting threads as well. I'm just going to get rid of that long thread there. Don't, oh, don't forget to put it in a thread bin rather than on the floor. And there you have the start and a stop. And I'll just flip it over so you can see it on the back. So this was our start here. And I'll stop here now I traveled a little bit on that just to go back over my stitches it's the same thing as the locking stitches I've just done them in a slight row along my previous stitching line but if you do it in one spot it works just as well if you do your starts and your stops you try and do that in an area that is uh, bulky uh, such as a seam a corner or um, in a busy spot that will be so much less noticeable and that is how you start and stop when you are doing free motion quilting with either uh, or, or any quilting on your domestic machine with your walking foot or your free motion foot have fun quilting